What's up guys, DV Apps here. Today I'll be showing you how you can easily create your own WordPress website. So this is going to be quite a long tutorial, probably about maybe an hour long or so, showing you each step on the way to making your own WordPress website. It's going to cover everything from registering your domain name, hosting, getting the theme, setting it up and putting all the content into the website. If you want to skip to any certain part in the tutorial, I'll put time codes in the description below and also have some other links to all the websites that I use in the description. So the first thing you'll need is a domain name. Now the best website for this I would recommend is namecheap.org and the reason being is that they have the largest variety of domain names. And from my personal experience, they've been the cheapest, even cheaper than GoDaddy and some of these other websites. So all you have to do is search for your domain name and the domain name is just the name that people enter. So for example, namecheap.com or google.com. So you just have to come up with the name. It could just be your business name, something like that. So I'll do DV apps and do a search. And it's going to do a search on all the different domain names that are available. And firstly, it's going to show you your domain name.com. And if that's taken, you can make an offer if you want. Or you can have a look at some of the other ones. So you could go with .club, .co, global, live, and there's loads of different ones. Once you've chosen one that you like, you can just click on add to cart and then click on view cart. And if you want, you can change this one year to up to five years. Some domain names have it even up to 10 years. And you can also click on auto renew. So every time it ends, it will auto renew at the end of the year but I'll just turn that off and another thing you want to make sure is that who is guard is enabled what this basically does is it makes sure that all the information that you enter for the sign up is all protected and no one can see it by using a website called who is now you just need to click on confirm order and then it will tell you to either log into an account or create a new one I already have an account so I'll just log in now from here you just need to choose your payment method, I'll just do card and once you click on it it will ask you to enter your details and also if you create a new account it will ask you for your name, your phone number, your address. Once you've entered everything you can just click on continue and you'll have that domain. Now I already have a separate domain that I already bought so all I have to do is go into my dashboard and I'll see my domain here. Now the next thing you need is hosting. Hosting is pretty much a server that stores all of your website's documents. So in this case, it will store our WordPress installation and all of the files associated with that. Now for hosting, there's loads of different options. It usually costs somewhere between five to $10 a month. For hosting, I'd recommend Bluehost. The reason being is they have really fast servers. They have 24 seven support. And if you don't like the service, you can also get your money back within the first 30 days of signing up. So all you have to do is go to bluehost.com slash track slash DV apps. And this is affiliate link, so I'll get some credit for this. I'll also leave this link in the description below if you want to support me. Once you're on the page, just click on get started now and you'll have the option of three different plans. So for most people, I'd just recommend the basic plan and that's if you just want one website. But if you will be hosting more than one website, I'd recommend the plus or the prime. You can look at all the different features here. For now, just click on basic and click select. So Bluehost also actually gives you a free domain name, but if you don't want to choose from any of these extensions, I'd just recommend going with Namecheap. And if you already bought one, you just have to type it in here. So I'll just type in my domain and click on next. Now you just have to enter in your account information or you can sign in with Google and it will automatically get most of this information. So I'll just do that. Once you've entered in all your information, just scroll down and you'll have the option of 12 months, 24, 36 or 60 months. So the more months there are, the higher the price you'll have to pay upfront, but you'll also get a higher discount. So it's really up to you which one you want. I think I'll just go with the 12 month and you can untick both of these because they're really not needed and you get the total here. Now below that, you just need to enter your payment info. Just So just put in your credit card or if you want, you can pay with PayPal. Once you've done that, you, you can just tick this button that you've read the terms and conditions and click on submit and then it will take you to PayPal to pay. Now, once you've paid, you'll get your receipt and it will give you an option to create a password. So just click on that and then you can just type in your password here and then click on next and then you can log in and then it will tell you to pick a theme. I would recommend just skipping this. So just go to the bottom and click on skip. After you've done that, you'll get this message and basically what it means is that they've given you a temporary domain and once you update your actual domain, it will automatically transfer over. So to update this, all we have to do is go to our Namecheap dashboard, go under your domain and click on manage. 
Now once you've done that you just need to go under name service and click on this drop down and then click on custom DNS and then here you just need to enter these values so I'll put these name servers in the description below so I'll just copy this first one go over here and paste it and then copy the second one and paste it in there and then click on this green tick and that usually takes a few hours to update now once you've done that you can just go over to Bluehost and click on start building and it will log you into your WordPress dashboard now from here you can just click on I don't need help now the next thing you can do is go and visit your website and have a look at how it looks right now now for now it will just be empty it will just say hello world and it will just be the basic WordPress theme the next thing you need to do is get a theme so basically what themes are is the way your website looks this is the default theme there's tens of thousands of different WordPress themes some are free some are paid the paid ones are usually better this is the theme that I'd recommend the reason being is it's really good for beginners because it has a lot of pre-built websites and a really easy to use editor if you want you can have a look at the live preview I'll leave a link to this theme in the description below all you have to do is click on add to cart go to the checkout create an account or you can sign in and then just enter your payment information and you'll get a download to this theme now I've already got the theme downloaded here so I'll just go ahead and extract this and once you go into this folder you'll and you'll have the theme and the child theme what the child theme is is it's just a theme that links to the main or parent theme and what it allows you to do is make changes to the actual code of the theme in the child theme and once you update it it won't affect any of that code so what you have to do is just go to the WordPress dashboard go under appearance themes and click on upload and then upload theme and then you can choose that file and click on install now now once it's uploaded it will give you an option to activate it you don't want to do that since we still have to upload the child theme so just go back under themes and then upload and then upload theme and choose the child theme this time and click on install now and now you can click on activate so once you've installed and activated the theme the next thing you need to do is install all the plugins that are required so just go under B theme and then install plugins and it will have a list of all the plugins that you need to install and these come for free with the theme so just go to the top here and tick that and that will select all of them go into bulk actions and then click on install and click on apply once that's done just click on return and then click on the tick mark again and bulk actions and activate and then click on apply once that's all done you can go into pre-built websites and this is one of the best features of this theme and it's usually the main reason I recommend this theme to beginners you have a lot of different pre-made websites which are pretty much good to go you just need to edit some of the content so you don't have to set up any of the layout it's all professionally done by the theme developers so from here you just need to choose one that you like there's loads of different ones I think there's close to 400 different websites on here so you can just go through look at them you can click on it and then get a live preview if you want the one I'm going to go with is called developer yep it's this one web developer and once you found the one you want you just click on it and click on install and from here just click on next and you want to import everything so complete pre-built website import make sure everything's ticked and click on install now once it's done you can have a look at the website so we'll just click on preview website and there you can see what it looks like currently and it's pretty much the exact same thing as a demo now what we can do is go into the muffin options and these are all the options for the theme so you can change a lot of different things like the colors so say for example you want to change the text color the background border color you have a lot of flexibility there I'm just going to leave it as it is and we're going to start from the top so we'll go global first and the layout I want it to be full width like this instead of having it uh, boxed in like that and I think this style looks better so I'll choose simple and for the button I think I'll leave it I think I'll leave it flat and we'll leave everything else as it is if you have a favicon you can add that here I don't at the moment so I'll just leave it blank and click on save changes and we can go to the next thing which is logo and here you can add your logo so I'll just quickly find my logo here and once it's uploaded I'll just click on select file and it's there I think it will be a little bit too big but we'll have a look at it after and you can put in a retina logo as well which is what we'll show on higher resolution displays for now I'm just going to remove that because I don't have a high resolution version of this logo and here is the sticky header logo so if you want a separate logo from here to when it's a sticky header 
you can change that but I'll leave it as it is and you want it to link to the home page so when someone clicks on it it goes back to the home page and if you want you can also use a text logo if you don't have a logo or if you don't want or if you don't want one and here you can also set the height the padding the alignment I'm just going to leave it as it is and click on save changes and let's reload our home page so we can have a look at the logo and there it is it's square I wouldn't recommend this but actually let's try out the text logo instead so I'll just put in my name here and save changes and now let's reload this and I think that looks much better. So let's go down to sliders and we don't really need to change anything here. So we can go into advanced. And here if you have a Google Maps API key, you can put that in if you're going to be using maps on the website. But I won't be using maps, so I'll just leave that blank. Also, if you want to disable any post types, you can also do that here. So say for example, you don't want to have offer on the website, which is a post type. You can disable that and that will just go away. And we'll click on save changes once again. And in hooks, you can add any custom code that you want, but we didn't have to do that right now. So we'll go into header now. And here you can choose the style of the header that you want. And it shows you how everything looks. So currently we have this one, which is transparent. So as you can see, there's no background here. It just shows whatever's on the page. If you want, you can change it. I think this looks pretty good for now. And this is the image that goes behind the header. So if you go on this page, you can see that image. If you want to change that, you can. But I think it looks pretty good. So we'll just leave it as it is. And down here, you can also choose if you want it to be sticky or not. So sticky just means if we scroll down, it comes down with you. And I think that looks much better. It's easier. So say for example, someone's all the way down here. They don't have to go all the way back up to go to another page. Now we can go into subheader. And the subheader is this part here. So for the style, you can choose how you want it to be centered and which elements you want showing. So if you just want the title, or if you want the title and the breadcrumbs. And breadcrumbs is just links that show the viewer how you, they got there. So for example, they went from home to contact and that's what they're on right now. If you have any other sub pages, it will show another arrow and then the name of the sub page. If you want, you can have that, but I don't think it looks too clean. So I'll just hide that here. And for the title tag, you want to leave it either H1 or H2, which is best for SEO. So I'll just leave it H1. You can also have a background image if you want, but that's not required. And once it's done, click on save changes. Now let's go into extras. And here, if you want, you can have an action button. So we'll just do an example. Let's say call us now. And for the link, let's put a phone number. So the way we do that is TEL, and then you put call in, and then you can put the phone number after that. Let's just do random numbers for now. And let's click on save changes so we can have a look. And that's what the action button looks like. Now, if anyone clicks on this from a phone, it will take them to the phone dialer and it will start calling that number. And here you also have other options like search. If you want to have a search bar, you can do that. Let's go into the next one, which is menu and action bar. And right now the line below the link is selected. So as you can see, you hover over it and the line comes below it. Now let's go into action bar. Action bar is similar to the button. But instead of having a button in the menu, it will be a bar at the top similar to this. If you want, you can have that on. Now let's go into sidebars. And there's nothing really that you need to change here. You can change the width of it if you want. And you can also force the sidebar so you want it on every single page rather than leaving it up to a page by page basis. But I'll leave it as it is. And let's go into the next one which is blog, portfolio and shop. There's nothing really that you need to change in general. So we can go into blog. And here you can choose your layout. So it shows you a few different previews of how you can have it. And you can also choose how many posts per page you want and all of the things like that. Now an important one is the comments. If you want, you can have comments on, but what usually ha ends up happening is you'll get a lot of spam comments just from bots linking to their own websites or just linking to ads. And most of the time it's not really used by many people. So I would recommend just turning that off unless you're actually going to be using it. Now let's go into portfolio. And it's pretty much the same thing. You can choose how you want it to be displayed. The only thing I'm going to change here is the layout. So I'm going to make it grid because this is what it looks like currently. And let's go into shop. I'm not going to be having a shop, so I don't need to worry about this. But if you are, you, you can change these options. It's pretty much the same as all of the other ones. Let's go into featured image. And here you can choose how the featured image looks like. You can change the width and the height and the crop as you require, but I'm going to leave it as default and let's go into pages. And this is another important one, which is page comments. It's the same thing as blog comments. It's really up to you if you're actually going to use it. If not, it just doesn't look that clean. So I'm just going to have that off and let's go into area 404. And here you can change how your 404 not found page looks. So this is what it looks like right now. It just says, oops, error 404 not found and a link to go to the homepage. 
and I think it looks alright as it is. And the next one is under construction. If you want you can have this enabled so while you're working on the website to visitors that go on that link it will just say it's under construction. I think I'll just enable this and I'll leave the title and I'll say this website is currently under construction. And if you want you can also have a counter on the website so it will show like a clock and the time until you can go on that website if you don't want that you can just delete this and leave it blank and if you want you can also have a contact form on there so so if anyone needs to contact you they still can i'll just leave that blank and click on save changes the next thing is footer so we'll just click on that and from the layout you can change how many columns that you want on the footer and the width of each of those columns i think i'll do a third a third a third which will mean you'll have three equal columns and you can also change the image which is this I think it looks fine so I'll just leave that. And the next thing you need to change is the copyright which is this part here. This is pretty good. I just need to change the name here. So I'll just copy that, paste it and we'll do copyright 2018 DVFs or rights reserved and let's just delete Muffin Group and you can center it. And you can also have a back to the top button which is just like a button that shows up here. Once you click on it, it takes you back to the top of the page. I actually want that so we'll do, we'll do default in copyright area so it'll just be a button down here and we'll click on save changes and in responsive there's not too much that you need to change the only thing would be in header which is how you want the header to look like on a phone i think this one looks the best on a phone and if you want you can also make it sticky on phones as well but i wouldn't recommend that because the phone screen is already pretty small and if you have a menu there it's just showing less of the page and we'll go into the next one which is seo and here you can put in your google analytics code your pixel code which is from Facebook or your Google remarketing code and these are your meta description and meta keywords fields so you can put in a description of your website and the keywords if you're using an external plugin like Yoast SEO you can turn that off and you won't need that I will be using that later on so I'll just turn this off and we can click on save changes all right so now we're going to edit the actual content on the website's pages now the first thing I want to change is this slider over here. So what we're going to do is go into dashboard and go to the bottom where it says slider revolution and then open up slider revolution. Then you'll see a list of your sliders. You just want to select the one that's being used here. You can see a preview of it and then click on edit. Now the first thing I'm going to change here is the text. So I'm just going to double click on it, delete everything and then I can put in the text that I want. I'm going to put in we are a creative company which creates websites now as you can see it's going off the page now where we want there to be a space so so that it goes to the new line we can just put in less than and then br and then greater than and it'll put it on a new line actually i'm going to change the text to we are a creative company with a passion for website development and then once i'm done i can just click on this green tick here now I'll just move this one down I can just use the arrow keys on my keyboard and put it down to where I want. I think around here is fine. And also this other text line. Just using my arrow keys again and I can bring that down. I think about here is fine. And I think I'm going to delete this second line. Click on OK and I'll just put this higher up. Now I'll just change the link for the read more button. So we'll click on it and then go into actions. And there's already an action set up so I'll just, so I'll just change this action to scroll down. So I'll click on link and then scroll below slider and for the video link it's the same thing so you're just going to actions and you have the video link here you can put in your own video link for like YouTube and it will just play like this. For now I'm just going to leave it I'll update that later on and we can save the changes up here. Now let's just refresh and have a look. Now if I click on read more it jumps down too quickly and it goes too far as well so I'm just going to change that back in here. I'll go back into actions and I'll do a scroll offset of minus 100 px. So it still goes down a little bit too far. So I'm going to change it to 150 I think that would be fine. And let's save it again. Yeah I think that's fine now. Now the next thing is these boxes here. So to change that we have to edit the page. Just go up here and open it in a new tab. And then you just want to scroll down into the muffin builder. And you have the column boxes right here. You can just click on it. Now the title is web development. So we'll just look for that in the code. And here it is. I want to change this to website development. And for the paragraph text right now, it's just sample text. So I'll just delete this. I'll put in, we will 
work with you to find out what you need from your website and achieve it and complete it in a timely manner and the rest I'm just going to change later so I'll just click on go down and click on save changes and it's the same thing for all the other boxes so I'll just do that quickly all right so I've put in the content for the icon boxes now I'm just going to go up and click on update so that we can have a look on this page now the next thing I'm going to do is get icons for each of these services so I'll just search up whatever the service is say for example website development and get a PNG icon so I'll just download this. Now you just want to go under media, add new and select the file that you want to upload. Once it's uploaded, just click on edit. And now you want to get the file URL. So just copy that, go back into the edit page and go under the icon box and just click on the pencil. Under image source, you can just put in this and go save changes and update and that's what it looks like now you just repeat this step for all of the different icons that you have alright so I've put in all of the icons now now the next thing is the process or the steps here so we have number one two and three and I think number two would be better suited at number one because this one shows like people are together and they're planning something and this one shows like it's coding so logically you'd have people coming up with a plan first and then coding so I'm just going to swap that around I'll just go into the edit page tab and we can just simply drag and drop it to the top and also I just want to delete one of these images I think this one looks better so I'll leave that so we'll just delete this slider click on OK and I'll duplicate this by clicking on this button and we can just drag it up here now to change the image I'll just click on edit and I'll get the link to this copy that link into here and we'll go save changes now let's have a preview of that it looks good now the next thing that needs to be changed is these icons here so you can just go back into the builder go under the column and it's the same thing again where it says image source you can just upload your own icon and put in the link here like, like I showed you before so I'll just do that now alright so now I've changed the icons and I've also put in some text it's the same way I showed you how to do it before now the next thing we're going to do is change this part here so just scroll down it's over here and I'm just going to delete the title because I don't think it's really needed normally this part is just a small section about half the size of this so I'm just going to delete the title and this box here now we'll just edit what it says here so we'll go back on here and click on the pencil now we can just change the numbers so so I'll do 120 plus happy clients and then save changes and go into the next one and we'll do 100 plus five star reviews and the next one will change this to five plus years in business and save changes and we'll just update and have a look at it it looks pretty good but I still think it's a little bit too tall so we're just going to reduce that now we'll go back into the builder scroll down into this section and we'll just delete this element that I forgot to delete and there's also another section down here which I'll also delete and we'll just go ahead and update it again and I think that looks good now the next thing here is case studies and I'm just going to change the name of this so from case studies I'm going to change it to our work and for the text below I'll just put this view our case studies to see a selection of our clients and how we have helped them to take their business to the next level and I'll just save that and the next thing is this box here so we'll just go under trailer box edit it and you have the image here if you want you can change this but I think this is a pretty good image so I'll just keep that as it is and the title can be whatever the work is or the case studies name is so for example we'll do one of the businesses that I made a website for so for the title I just put in their name which is winning auctions and for the link you can create a case study under this page and for the link I'll just link it to the case studies page for now and click on save changes 
And the same thing for the other box. So I'll just put in another business, which was course mentor. And I'll just link into case studies and save changes. And I think I'll just replace this part with another one of these boxes. So I'll just delete this, click on okay and copy this across into here and I'll change the title to another business which was null full and save changes. Now let's just update and have a look. And that's pretty much it. You just need to repeat this process for the other pages. It's quite simple especially with this builder. It makes it really easy to visualize each of the elements and also gives you a lot of different options to customize it to how you want it. Now the last thing I want to cover is the contact page and specifically how you can configure the contact form so that you can receive the messages from this onto your email. So on the left hand side you'll see an option which says contact and then you can go underneath it and click on contact forms. And there's two options here so we need to find out which one of these forms is being used on this page. So to do that we'll just go on edit page and we'll scroll down until we see here the contact form just click on edit and you'll have this id here 64 and there's the id there 64 so it's the first one so we'll just click on edit and these are the different fields if you want you can add some but i think these are pretty good these ones are pretty standard just the name email subject and the message we just need to change the email option so we'll go under mail so under two would be where you want to receive the emails i'll just do my email and from would be your name which is a field so whatever the sender enters over here would come up as the name on your email and then after that you just need to put in a listen sign and then an email which has your domain in it you have to make sure that it has your domain in it because if it doesn't you won't receive those emails now to create an email address for your domain just go under bluehost go under email and you can enter an email account so we'll do hello at dvapps.site and you can put in a password or you can also generate a random password and for the quota you can set a quota but i just recommend doing it unlimited and make sure that the configuration instructions are sent and click on create account and your email has been made now to access this email you can just go under email accounts and access webmail and it will just open it in a new tab or otherwise you can also connect your mail client to this so just click on connect devices and then click on set up mail client and it'll give you instructions on how you can set up your email client such as outlook so that you receive all the emails from this account now once that's done we can move on to the subject and for the subject we'll just do your subject meaning whatever the sender enters and you want to make sure that it's in quotes and the next thing is additional headers you can put this in i'll leave it in the description below what this basically does is it allows you to directly respond to the sender's email instead of having to go and copy it so it just makes it much easier and for the message body we can just do from your name and then listen sign your email greater than sign and then we can also put the subject here which will just be your subject and then for message body or just be your dash message you can just copy each of these commands from here and i'll also leave all of this info in the description below so it'll make it really easy for you just copy and paste it once that's done just click on save and it's all set up and that's basically it for this video if you guys have any questions leave it in the comments below and i'll be sure to answer them and if you need any help with your website development seo or any other kind of web related stuff i can also help with that just go onto my website DV apps outside and you can go ahead and contact me. That's all for this video. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Until next time, peace.